Hello, everyone. Welcome to Wednesdays with Willa. I am your host, Willa White, and this is my weekly podcast show that airs on my Facebook page live on Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, USA. It's a wonderful opportunity for you to join in a spiritual conversation that I have with my special guest. And I'm delighted to have with me today, Colin Bates. Hello, Colin. Hello there. Hi, everyone. <laughs> it's always great to see you and be with you. And I can't wait to have a discussion. Colin is a medium from the United Kingdom. And so he's coming to us live from England, <laughs> across the pond. And he's been here to Lilydale several times. And he is a teacher. You can look for his classes that he's hopefully offering this summer with Lily Bell Assembly. And also check out his website at colinbates.com, I believe. So, so you'll want to make sure that you check things out there. Also, uh, Colin has the wonderful background of being a palliative care nurse uh, in his former life, if you will. And he's going to share some of that experience with us today. And I can't wait to have this discussion. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, this uh, podcast is available on my Facebook page, Willa White Medium, and also on my YouTube channel, as well as on Lily Dale Radio, which is part of a blog talk radio family uh, that airs different weekly podcasts. And I encourage you to take a look at all of those. They're different hosts and different programs and different topics. So lots of great information from Lily Dale Assembly. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and get into our conversation. And our topic today is palliative care and the spirit experience. And I know you, Colin, are going to bring some wonderful insight to this since you've had not just only the palliative care nursing side of it, but also the medium, being a spiritual medium. So That's please- wonderful. Yes, thank you. And it's so lovely to be with you and to, to chat once again and to really share this time of the heart, this time of the spirit. And my goodness, what a wonderful title uh, to just discuss um, together. Because you know, one thing that we all have in common is that as we live, as we breathe within the physical life and world, that we all know that life is finite, that we will reach a point where we are no longer within the physical world. And for me, this is very much uh, an individual journey. And when we move towards that time and we speak of the caring process and and we combine that with the dying process, um, there is no death because even within the last breath of the physical life, we awake to the dawning of a new life within the sense of the spirit world but we touch all aspects of life within nursing and all different beliefs within nursing. And one thing that I've found over the many years of caring that I've done is that it doesn't matter which background we come from, we all come together within that caring point. And when we are faced with that moment, such as a terminal illness, or even when we are within remission from a terminal illness. It it takes a moment and a time where we start to reflect upon life itself and upon the journey of life. And the spiritual aspects of life often come uh, to the fore there. We know that medical science now is, is really looking more towards the holistic approach, the mind, the body and the spirit, and that each one is is a valuable part of life and of of the journey of life. And one thing that I have found more than anything is that it doesn't matter which background we come from, which belief we come from, as we move through those times of life, it is compassion which is the greatest gift of all for that is the power, the presence of the great spirit. And although, you know, we speak of the many faces of the God force itself, be it, you know, um, however you choose to perceive it. And this is really where we, we all come together and how we perceive that, that presence to be within ourselves. It may 
possibly be, you see, that we're just awakening to the possibility, even at that stage within life, and that we look back upon life, we look at what has happened within life and, and how that has unfolded for each one of us. And so we tend to really um, embrace that side more towards the end of life rather than within life. Although it is a spiritual way of life, a spiritual unfoldment, when that awakening comes, we can be 10, we can be 20, we can be 100. It is individual to the soul's own experience. The power of creation is love itself because that has brought the universe into being. And love together with compassion and understanding is really where the spirit exists. For the great mystery of all life is the source of all life and whatever we choose to call it or however we choose to perceive it, it is the power of all life. And, and often as we go through these stages of, of life, we look to that we look to the faith that we have within ourselves, which is the belief within ourselves of that which we wish to be that we wish to embrace and you know it is an individual journey and process that we come into our own knowledge and and i've always believed that you know that everything that we need for this journey while we reside within the universe lies within the soul power itself and that we come into times of light we come into times of knowledge and, and and of being you know within ourselves and when we are faced with these times of of moving forward from the physical life we tend to look more and more not just to our own journey and what we have experienced but what we expect to experience that as we move forward, what is life? What, what is the journey? And what I have found more, more than anything here is that even, even if you do not have an individual faith, that when we, when we are faced with that moment, we often seem to move towards it before we embrace it. And that many people experience the spirit long before their time of passing. And that the visions that they have are those that have gone before them and who start to bring their presence forward. I remember that I nursed my, my grandmother and I was with her virtually every day before she passed. And I went to see her and I sat by her bed. And she said to her one day, and I was giving her healing, and uh, she said, oh, she said, Frank was here this afternoon. And Frank was her youngest brother, who she loved dearly. I said, oh, was he? I said, how was he? She said, oh, well, he was fine. He just came to see me. And I thought, oh, isn't that wonderful? That we're starting to become aware of, of the presence within the spirit itself. And also what I have experienced many times now uh, people who go through uh, great difficulties before their moment of passing, that there is actually an aspect of them that is already there within the spirit. People who have um, dementia, Alzheimer's, where there is no physical recognition of their family. And yet when I've been working mediumistically, I've been aware of their presence. And so the spirit itself is, is, is being loved, is, is, is residing, if you will, to a degree already with, within the spirit world. And, and for me, how lovely that is to know that even though physically and mentally, um, we have no longer that sense of recognition of who we are and of those that connect to us, that there is in, in fact a, a, an essence within the spirit that is, is loving them and, and is looking after them. And often, you know, when we lose someone very close to us, that is of great comfort to know that no one is alone, no one is lost, no one is left, and that truly all are loved. 
and that the soul itself, as it moves through these different stages of progression, remains true to itself. And whether it is five minutes, five years or 50 years, you and I will know each other. We will know each other by that divine spark of recognition and the way that that comes, you know, in, into being. And when someone is going through these times of, of preparation to passing, or even as I've said, if they're in remission, for me, what is most important is that when they find their voice, we allow them to speak. And that often, you know, unfinished business comes to mind, be it with family, be it with the past. And that to speak of such things is in a way healing those aspects within ourselves, you see, and within our lives. And, and it may be that we need to speak to people we haven't spoken to for years physically. And that there is a time of coming together and a time of forgiveness. And sometimes that forgiveness is also to do with self and life and the journey. And so always within that, the, the encouragement of the speaking for me is one of the most important aspects. And you know, when we work within the healing profession, it, it is so true that often we will say more to a stranger than we will to someone that we know. And, and when we work within that modem of healing, uh, it is being there to listen, not to judge, but just to listen. And often in the listening, you see, we are able to then connect on the soul level and then to bring that sense of healing and comfort and, and, and peace, really. Because when we reach that stage within our lives, as we all do and must, it is finding that peace within ourselves. And often, you see, giving ourselves permission to say it's okay. Now close your gentle eyes, rest, and all is well. And you see, this is where the voice is extraordinary. Because the voice, you see, energetically, contains all of the compassion, the power to heal and to love, can come through the voice, as well as energetically through the auric field. And so just by being there and just speaking, we are then able to, to bring that sense of peace, that sense of reverence, and above all dignity to that time. Because often it isn't an easy time, and especially if somebody's going through a terminal illness, then it can be uh, physically very painful. And, and so often, what we do is, 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 is to uh, bring that sense of calmness, comfort, and then to bring them into a state of peace where they're then able to gently and softly um, take their sense of, of transition. And I think that more and more as we look to the spiritual pathway, the spiritual aspects of life and of the journey, we need to really begin to embrace that the spirit world is here and now and that we could not be more connected to it because it's the power from whence we come and it's the energy from which we return. So we actually have within ourselves our own direct line to the spirit world, our own hotline, if you will, to speak to the spirit, you see, because it's within us. You know, and it's not with the mind, but it's with the heart and it's the knowing of the soul that creates communication. I always say to my students, think not with the mind, but feel with the heart and know with the soul, for it will guide you in this incredible journey of life unto life. And you see, we live in this physical world and we don't always listen. We don't always listen and find those moments of peace and, and of, of quiet. So when somebody is going through these times of difficulty, everyone is going to be different in, in the way that they react and in the way that they deal with these issues. And, and for me, I've always, because I've always loved people ever since I was little, I was the carer to my parents from a very early age. And, and so it's something that I've always done very easily. 
and, and sitting beside people and talking to them through those last moments. I've had the privilege of doing it time and time again when I used to work in the community and people used to just sit by the bed and, and then you just talk and, and then you'd be there for a while and, until till you, for when you was needed or you'd sit down and, and just be there while somebody had took a break. And it was what we all did because it was it was the way of life where I was brought up and that's what we did. So it's for me, it's a great privilege to be able to do that and then also medically to be able to support and to sustain. And although it was something that I only did for a short period of time, it was one of the most rewarding of, of, of everything because when you're dealing with life, it is very precious. And I'm always reminded of the words of Tennyson, tread softly lest you tread on my dreams. And it's always been that way with life and with people and, and with the journey. And I think sometimes, you see, we don't really quite realise how close the spirit world is to us and, and to this journey of, of, of life. And it's only the physical mind, you see, that takes us away from the absolute reality because we're trained to live in the physical mind, you see. And while we reside within the physical mind, everything is muted. Those subtle realms of, um, of the psyche and of the spirit are not there for us because we're just so here, you see. But when we begin to find the peace and the quiet, which of course you can create through the power of the voice, um, it's wonderful, you see, whether it's the holding of a hand or just the speaking of life, and, and, and of the journey of life and being able to encourage that healing process. Because you see, you can never keep someone longer in this life and world than is their moment to leave it. And the wonderful power of healing, which really is reminding the soul of its own divine connection has the ability to cushion the soul upon its next stage of evolution. And so it's, love is always in abundance with healing. And it has this ability to be a calmative, a calmative of the mind to bring and to create that sense of peace and harmony. And then when people can speak, that they are then able to, um, whatever it is they need to speak of, it's so important that that's encouraged. And, and, and I always find that just by being there and just saying those words that need to be said can then encourage that which is needed. And then people can then begin to find their peace. And fear, you see, is, is, is the greatest obstacle within those moments of, of moving towards uh, the eventual leaving of the physical life and, and, and world. And sometimes that process can be a very long uh, process. I remember nursing my father for three years before he passed. And I was fortunate that I was there every day, was able to um, help him in a small way right until the last moment, you see. And so when it is a, a gradual losing of the physical life, the support and the strength of those that can provide that help is immeasurable. Um, and especially within families as, as well. And the naturalness of, of what we create is really where it will bring the success because it can then alleviate the family as well as those that are taking their time and, and, and it's their time to transition from one uh, life to the next. And, and so many aspects come together within that final time. And one of the most extraordinary is the experience of the spirit. Because as we move, you see, towards looking at our own life and the, and the finality of it, it, it tends to awaken something within us. And, and because it is an individual journey, 
it may be that it's not until that time that the desire and the awakening happens. You know, I remember with my father, I asked him something of the spirit once, and he was one of the most spiritual uh, people it's ever been my privilege to know. And he looked at me and he said, I will answer this question once, but you never ask me again. Um, and he was the most down to earth man ever, so I never did. But then towards the end of his life, he said to me one day, he said, um, he said, Collie, he said, um, do you think, um, because he was very close to my mother's mother, he said, do you think she'll fetch me, um, Millie? Do you think she'll fetch me? And I said, I'm sure she will. I said, I'm sure she'll be there. And it was the only conversation we ever needed. And it was just that he needed to know that, that someone was there and somebody cared and that he wouldn't be left in that moment of wondering. And, and she was, of course, because I was with him when he passed and my mother was as well. And I could feel the presence of everyone gathering around as if they were saying, now, come on, it's time for you to go. Now come with us. And, and that really is, is one of the most extraordinary aspects of life where the spirit is concerned because all are loved, all are wanted. And this really is such an important aspect to life and to the journey of life that really sometimes you see through what we're taught and what we believe, we, we've created this, this sense of fear. I've got to do this, I've got to do that. I've got to create this and I've got to be this and this. And then when it's not fully fulfilled, then it creates fear within ourselves. And, and sometimes that does more harm than good, really. Because yes, we can look at life, but we also have to remember that where we are now is very different to where we once were. And that the thoughts and actions of the past may have brought us to this point. But the thoughts and actions of the present take us forward. And, and that really that life and the journey of life is one great evolving process that is, is never ending and is, is, is continuous within our thoughts, within our ideas. And what I found more than anything really as I travel through the world with, with, with teaching is that the heart is the same. It doesn't matter where it is. Is that all of us have this need within ourselves, this infinite compassion, because that really is, is where the spirit exists. The spirit exists within the infinite compassion of all life. And when we find and embrace that, within ourselves, you see, then you'll find the spirit world because it's a facet of the creative force itself and, and of, of, of our very being, you see. And so when we start to look towards that at whatever stage of life we are, we are then comforted, you see, because then we begin to, to um, to embrace it, I think that's a very good word. We begin to embrace that within ourselves. And also for those that are supporting someone who is moving through that time of transition, it's, it's the support that we give, not just to the person who is moving forward, but also to those that are surrounding them. And that's where you see the power of healing and the power of the voice is extraordinary because it brings us all together, you see, within that moment of healing and that great blessing. And one of the blessings that we can give to each other is to give each other permission to go and say, it's okay, just rest, close your beautiful eyes and just know that the light and the love is here for you and that we are still here for you, and that our love will eternally be with you. And I think often we, we are faced with our own fear, not just the fear of those who are moving through this time, but the fear that we have as an individual, helping to see them through that time. 
And, and so often I always look to the higher purpose of that which we create. And, and, and it's as if it can move us into a different state of being. You know, if someone comes to me and, and, and you know, they're in need and, and, and they're seeking communication and confirmation of life. When I move into the time of prayer to create that moment within myself, I will then expand my own soul and light and heart to the higher purpose of that which we create. And then it will take me beyond my own insecurities. And it will take me into the absolute compassion that is then needed to support and to strengthen uh, those who are in need. And, and so often you see, when we move into those times of sensitivity, it touches something within us that can then, you know, trigger something of our own sensitivity. But when you move into the higher purpose of that which we create and of that which we are, all of a sudden we become one with the power itself. We become one with love, we become one with compassion. And then we are able to support, we are able to strengthen. And yes, we may fall apart because that is the human part of life, because we have to grieve that sense of loss because it is a part of life and the journey. But when we are within the middle of it, within that moment of strength, we're able to cope. We are able to become that which is needed in order to provide that which supports and strengthens the journey and then helps the individual, whoever it is, to find the strength within themselves, whether it is to let go or whether it is to rebuild their life physically. Because, you know, even if we are within remission, you know, we've gone through a tremendous process within ourselves, physically, mentally, emotionally and spiritually. And, and sometimes we also need the support to, to rebuild ourselves. And, and so it touches many aspects of life. And, you know, one of the issues that also we deal with is anger. Because it can be anger, it can be frustration. Why am I going through this? Why am I doing this? Why is this happening? Not just with the person themselves, but it can be with the family as well. So this is also where the healing comes into being. And, and ultimately, the finding of peace within it, you know? And, and it would be wonderful, you see, if everybody gently closes their eyes, we say a prayer and then they just pass beautifully to the spirit. And, and, and really, you know, some of the most spiritual people that I've ever known have gone through the most difficult times before they've taken their transition uh, to life. You know, some of my teachers, that I worked with for 40 years, then all of a sudden just developed Alzheimer's. And, and, and to see that with someone who had given their lives to others was such a, an aspect to see. And, and sometimes we look at, you know, the meaning within it and we can't find the meaning because in, in a way, you know, the soul and its own experiences within life is the learning itself. And, and, you know, we have to find our peace within it ourselves, as well as those that are moving through those times of difficulty. And this is really where the presence of the spirit is just such an amazing support. Because the knowing, you see, of the spirit world is extraordinary. And their connection to life and the journey of life is extraordinary. And just at that moment, all of a sudden, it's as if there is this, this presence that builds within the room. And, and all of a sudden, you know that it's okay. And many people speak of this experience and those that have, have, have gone through the journey and then have come back again, you know, and, and that the presence just starts to build. And then, you know, that the presence of the spirit 
and the grace and the goodness of God is present. And that before that last breath is finished, there is an awakening to a new reality of, of life and, and, and of, 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 of being. And so often I've seen that within the spirit and when people have come back and communicated that they've just very gently awoken to a new reality. And that as they've awoken to this new reality, all of a sudden they become aware of all those that they've loved as if as they wake, awaken slowly, that they begin to realize, oh, there you are, you're with me still. And that is just so beautiful because it's life unto life. And, and the time that is between the moment of being, all are loved and, and no one is lost. And, and so often I, I hear these crazy people who, who are saying that, um, you know, I've, I've, I, need to, I need to do this because there's somebody here and they're lost. Come on. How can the power that knows all, loves all, understands all, can mark the fall of a single bird and the growth of a blade of grass? How can that beautiful, beautiful sense of creation ever lose someone? No, I don't believe such a thing at all. And however someone passes from this life to the next, all are loved, all are cherished, and all are surrounded by the angels of light and of love. And that the awakening to the spirit life is one that is gradual, and depending upon the soul's growth and its own experience. Because, you know, imagine if you've got somebody who had no belief in anything whatsoever. And, and that there was this, this, oh, I'm not going anywhere. When I'm gone, I'm gone. You know, how often have I heard that one? And then 10 minutes later, a voice in the air saying, well, actually, I'm still here. Well, you say, well yes, you are, dear one. Um, but don't worry about it because everything is fine. Go and tend your garden in heaven and all is well, you know. And um, for me, what is so important is that we can gently guide the way, but you make up your own mind and your own thoughts and you come into the time of your own realisation. And that's what's so wonderful about uh, spiritualism and, and the spirit itself, for it takes that into the heart, you know, that what we are and who we are and what we create and what we unfold is who we are and is the eternal you and I. And at that moment, as we move from one facet of life into another, we don't become an angel with a harp and wings and sit on a cloud. Wouldn't that be rather lovely? I wouldn't mind, would you? How do you feel about that? <laughs> and then we just, just play for a while, perhaps. Yeah. Um, I've always said to everybody, you know, when I go to heaven, I'm going to sit and think about it for a while. So, so don't expect to hear from me because I'm just going to a little cloud somewhere with a little harp. I may play a little bit and sing a bit, perhaps. Wouldn't that be, awful? <laughs> Wouldn't that be awful? And then all of a sudden, you know, the reality is that we enter into a world of light and mind that is called the spirit, but it's very much like this world because it's created by our own thoughts, our own energy. And, you know, one of the things that I look forward to, because I, I was very, been very fortunate with my family because I was always brought up with love and, and surrounded by it, really. And, and that when I close my eyes on this life, I'm going to be at my grandmother's back door and then I'm going to just walk in as I always did and shout. And then there will be grandma, grandpa, ma and pa, and they'll all be around the table as we all used to gather for a cup of tea. And I should just walk in. There'll be aunties and uncles sitting around and I'll say, well, this has been a while, but how are you? And then they'll be exactly the same as they ever were. And that's extraordinary, you see, because life does move. It does change within the spirit. But while we need that sense of reassurance, it's there. So where do we go in heaven? Where well, we go to exactly 
that which is thou preparest a place before me. And so it's a reality within a reality within a reality, you see. Within my house, there are many mansions. And so it's absolutely right because it's created by our own thoughts and our own energies. And then when we consider, you know, the angels of healing, the angels of light, this has been a belief since, oh, before the Bible was written, you know, the three tiers before the throne of Her before the throne of heaven, you know, the archangels, the seraphim, the cherubim, and that they are all before the throne of the presence and the healing angels. And so it's a belief that's been there always and that the power to heal and the power of compassion lies and rests within you and I, because that's the power to heal, you see, it comes from here. But the heart, you see, is directly connected to the soul. And the soul itself is the divine spark of life eternal. And so if we look at the simplicity of that, then once we touch the spark of the soul, we then have an access to an unlimited supply of compassion and love because it's the power of, of goodness. It's God's love, however you choose to perceive it to be. So it connects you and I, regardless of color, race, creed, because we all come from that same great mystery of all life. And so everything is one. And, and, and really, it, it's such a simple belief and a simple, uh, a simple understanding and moment of being. And, and when that moment comes to leave this world, as all must, upon this incredible journey of life unto life, the dignity, the compassion, the love and the healing that we give to each other cushions the soul on its next stage of evolution. And I do believe this, that a part of our love goes with them, that it not only surrounds them with love, but just heals the soul on its next stage of its journey and, and its life. And this is what is so beautiful, you see, with mediumship, because many people come to see us because they just need to know that they're okay that they've landed. And I say, well, your mother's here and she's landed. Isn't that a marvelous expression? She's here and she's landed and she's taking charge of everybody. And, and, and it's, it, it's just so wonderful because it's life, you see. Oh yes, that's my mother. Yes, she's not gonna sit on a cloud. She's up and doing, she's organizing your father. Isn't that lovely? And <laughs> yes, isn't it though? But then to know that, is, is extraordinary. And, and I love this aspect of a part of the soul being present within the spirit before uh, the soul physically leaves the body. In my observation, I would, I would absolutely say that is true. I, I, for a number of years, I was a hospice care volunteer and it, I really enjoyed the work that I did with people. And I would be assigned to patients that were either in their private home or in a nursing home. And I would just go wherever they needed me to go. And, and I learned so much about how people were dealing with their fears, the caregiver dealing with their fears mm -hmm. and their difficulties in caring for their person adequately or their belief systems about that and so some of them i would say the vast majority of them had either alzheimer's or dementia and i would observe that their soul would be up and out of their body and it's like a hologram effect of their face you could see it like a face duplicate next to them or sometimes in another place in the room and so that i i started to just go ahead and talk to their soul rather than their physical body that it, trying to get through to someone's physical consciousness when they're mm. in that state of Alzheimer's or dementia, it's, it doesn't work well. It, it's no, absolutely. so much more easily and effortlessly if you speak to their soul. And they would start to recognize me 
Mm. And indicators of those because they recognize my soul, the vibrational frequency of that, of that. And I love what you said about how you just needed to be, um, be who they needed you to be in those moments. Absolutely. Instead of saying, oh, you should be remembering this and you should be able to do that. And why don't you know that I'm your, your son or your daughter or any of that? Yeah. You just put that aside and be who you need to be for that individual and such a support of the process. And so, you know, I was providing respite care to, to the family members. And a lot of times they wanted to just go ahead and stay and talk with me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but isn't, isn't that just, isn't that wonderful, you see, because the soul recognized the source of the power. Yeah, yeah. And, and that is what is just so wonderful, you see, because the power of the voice touches the power of the soul and, and, it, and it can soothe, you see, because everything is there within. Look at the breath of life and the creative force within life. It's there within the breath itself and within the kindness that we bring. It's only when we try to put it all into some kind of category or order, it doesn't work. It comes as an inspiration, you see. And that's what I find so wonderful with the spirit, you see, because those words that are needed just come. They do. And, and, and speaking to the soul to soul is, is, oh, is, is just perfect. Yeah. And did you notice when you, when you were doing this that, many times when you would say it's okay you know like you you said it so beautifully in your beautiful voice Colin but you said close my close your eyes my darling <laughs> but I I would say to them you know if you need to go ahead and pass go go ahead mm -hmm. and uh, I, I would say all right I'm going to be gone for this week so I won't be able to see you it's my one time a year that I go away on a vacation and if you need to pass while I'm away, it's gonna be okay and we will connect and I will talk to you after you pass. And I had a lot of people that would pass while I was gone. Yeah, no, and, absolutely, and totally. It was really fascinating to me because mm -hmm. I knew that they were sometimes using the energy that was around them to sustain them. Yes. During that time mm -hmm. and so sometimes supportive energy has to be withdrawn to some extent so that they can go ahead and absolutely pass. does that make sense to you no no totally because often you see um and and it's the same within readings when people come and they have unfinished business with the spirit and one of the major aspects of that is i wasn't there mm -hmm. but you see maybe we're not meant to be there and that often what the spirit will do is they'll wait for that moment when no one's looking and then they can go. And it, it, it honestly, it is just the sneakiest thing ever. You know, I was looking after my mother and I was, they let me sleep with her in the hospital. Whole family were there. Oh, everybody was there and it was lovely. And then I said to everybody at Harper's and I said, oh, off you go. And then the nurse came and checked her and she said, well, she's going nowhere today. And I said, oh, I said, you all go. I said, I'll just sleep with mama and everything's fine and lovely. And then I went round tidying the room and there she was. And then I did the lamps and everything like this. And I just sat beside her and went, oh, Audrey, because I called my mother Audrey. I said, oh, Audrey, darling. I said, isn't it lovely? I said, they've all gone. They've all gone home and it's quiet. And all of a sudden she died. 10 minutes after everybody left, you see. So she was such a naughty one, my mother. And um, she just waited. And I said, oh, Audrey, isn't it lovely? It's so quiet. She went, I said, oh, Audrey, you are naughty, but off you go. And um, it, it, and people often do that, you see, and it's not that they need people to be there. I mean, every case is different, but people often choose their moment simply because there is such a pull to stay here and everybody's, you know, and then when you've got that peace and that quiet, then all of a sudden it's okay. And then when I do a reading for someone, um, I just say, well, your mother's here. And she said she needed the quiet just to go and that you carry that on your shoulders. Now you've got to just drop it. Now, come on, pull yourself, let it go. Because people often, you know, I wasn't there. I wasn't able to be there. But maybe, you know, the spirit just needed that quiet just to slip away. And... Um, 
you know, as I say, everybody is different in the way that they perceive life and the energy of life. And for me, what's so important within the journey is that we support that in the best way that we possibly can, that we've reached a point now where what we have to focus on is sometimes letting go of preconceived ideas of fear, of anger, and just say, no, it's okay. Just relax. You know, it's okay. You're fine. Everything's fine. Some of them are, are white knuckling it. They're white -knuckling. Mm. They don't want oh, yes. I mean, sometimes people are dragged to heaven because they're just not going to go, you know, and they're hanging on and they're just they're just just hanging on because, you know, for for it can be many reasons. And this really is where the healing and the power of the voice, you know, and, and I love that part where you said the speaking to the soul, you see because it's not with the mind that truly you speak it's with the heart that touches the soul because the soul is the power to know and that's why healing itself you see is so wonderful because it heals on all those levels physical mental emotional and spiritual but within the energy itself it reminds the soul of its divine connection and 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 so it gives it it gives permission unto permission and and it just brings that that moment um, in, into being and you know sometimes that time is traumatic for everyone and so what we're able to do is to bring peace and also normality in a way that honors that moment and honors that time either leading up to it or in between where really we're able to just support life and life is precious and everyone's life is precious. And, and sometimes people haven't, haven't got that. They haven't got the people around them, you know, and just to have someone sit beside them and say, well, you know, it's okay and it's fine. And we're here, we're here for you. And I hear that so often in whether it's in nursing homes or in hospitals that when they know somebody is getting ready for that moment, they just go quietly and sit beside them. And then just talk to them and just say, you know, it's okay and I'm here. And sometimes that's all people need is, is the sense of that reassurance. And I think more and more because of what we're going through, certainly within this time within the world, there's going to be such a great resurgence of the spirit because more and more people are going to come because a lot of people haven't even been able to be there when their loved ones have passed over this last year um, because it's been forbidden, you know. And so more and more people are going to need to know that their loved ones are safe and well and, and that they are still a part of each other. So the work of the spirit is as strong today as it's ever been and probably more so within that sense of need. But how wonderful to know that we all have this ability within us called prayer that a living prayer is the power to heal and that when we pray with our thoughts we rise within our consciousness and we are lifted beyond life and we know that god has heard us and that the kindness of a thought is a prayer that is forever and that each one of us has this within us because really mediumship is the gift of life you know, it is about life and it is about the journey of life. And, you know, when you've lived and when you've loved and when you've lost, uh, we hold on to that more than ever because we need that time to grieve, to heal, to love, to be. And it's all part of that process. And, and the presence of the spirit, once we are touched by that knowing, Oh, you're okay, Mum. I remember you. Mm -hmm. You're still here. You're still with me. And then we just wrap it in love and we place it in the heart in a different way that we learn to live with because it stays with us forever. Mm -hmm. But it just changes a little, you know, in, in, in that way. And, you know, this sense of saying goodbye um, is perhaps sometimes the hardest thing that we ever do in life. 
And, and I would say, well, you know, true love is never having to say goodbye. It's saying, well, I'll see you soon. And always remember that you're loved. And in remembering that, we touch it and we become it, you see. Some of the loving things that when you were saying about the words and how the voice can really help. Uh, you know, I've had clients that have told me about things that they've done special when a person is at their end of life. And then I've also taken part in them. And so you gather around, you know, a small group around the person who's passing and pray mm -hmm. over them. Yes. And know that they're being lifted to the light. And I've had some families that have been, who sing, that they, they've actually. Oh, beautiful. Their, their loved one in, in, yes. in, in spirit. And then it's almost like a joyous, like a celebration. It makes me want to cry right now, just thinking about it, because there, that resonance of singing in that joyful mode. Absolutely. It can take you upon the wings of love and lead us. And, and as, as I said at the beginning, you see, when it is that moment of time, nothing can prevent that moment of time. But what we can do is to support the process mm -hmm. and to love and to nurture the process. And, you know, so often um, when people come back through communication, whether it's for a reading or a service, um, they'll often say the words that were said, you gave me permission to go. Yeah. Yeah. You told me it was okay. Yeah. And they were all there and it was fine. Lovely, it's beautiful. One of, really. one of the best ways I know to support a person when they're passing is to to love them, to cuddle them if they like to be cuddled. Absolutely. And uh, to just sit with them quietly. Mm. No, truly. And and this is really with the encouraging. If you need to speak, speak. You know, it's 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 a time really where we just say that which is which is often needed to be said and of course that's going to be different for every individual but creating the time and the moment one of the most beautiful things i ever saw when i was working in the community there was a lovely lady and she was over a hundred and she was really quite famous in the village because she was the type of lady that did everything that ladies didn't do. You know, she was into aviation, she was into cricket, she was into, she did all those wonderful things. And I went in the morning to see her and the lady that was looking after, and she'd gone outside and she'd collected from all the garden and the surrounding areas, all the blossom that she could, because it was the time of the blossom. And when I walked into her bedroom, just to help her with the turning and everything, there was all these swathes of blossom all around the room, in jars, on the sideboard, on the dressing table, on the bed, so that when she opened her eyes, all she could see was this massive blossom everywhere. And it was one of the most beautiful things that I've ever seen. Mm. And it was just what she wanted. Beautiful. Just to create that in, 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 in such a way. And I mean, there was a fire roaring in the chimney place and everything, and it was 110 sweltering. But all this blossom was there for that moment. So when she opened her eyes, she it brought everything there to her that she needed. Mm -hmm. Never forget it. It was the most wonderful moment. I it's beautiful. It that way. Now, not all passings seem like they're beautiful. No. Some of them have this kind of magical connection mm. to them but not yeah. all of them seem like they're beautiful to some people what would you say to them to the people who felt like it wasn't beautiful watching my person pass well i think that what is most important here is is that every passing is unique and it is is individual and that when we move into that heightened state of compassion that we are able to deal with that in, in, in the best way that we possibly can. Yes. And, and, and sometimes um, the experience of the soul itself 
and the growth that, that takes place within such moments. Um, it's the only way I've ever been able to understand it to a certain degree. And that the experiences that we have, um, that we are able to deal with that within that moment, that we are able through the love and the compassion to see them through. And, it, you know, it, it would be wonderful, as, as I said earlier, if everybody just closed their gentle eyes and smiled sweetly and they were gone. But sometimes it, it can be traumatic. And, and that's where the healing really does come into being, but not just for those that are passing, but for those that witness it. Because often you see that when we think of someone who has been a part of us, within the first three minutes, we remember how they went. And so sometimes also it's, it's about healing that moment and, and how we look at that moment within it and, and the energy of it. And so everything should be treated with loving kindness. Um, but when we look at life and all the facets of life, sometimes life isn't kind. Um, we only have to, you know, read the paper to see, you know, how, how difficult that is. And, you know, one thing that I've learned through the many years is, is the bottomless well of compassion that comes within ourselves and how we are able to deal with that, but also how we're able to surround those that reach that point and, and, and move through that point. You know, I've known of people that have, 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 have been dragged to heaven because do you think they would let go? You know, oh, she'll be gone tomorrow, two weeks later. No. And, and, and so I think we just have to work within the universal love and the universal compassion. And, and you know, when we lose someone tragically, um, that will stay with us. And we also have to go through that healing process. Mm -hmm. and, and that sometimes may take time, that take years. And, and like I said, I don't know that we ever fully recover. What we do is we surround it with love and place it into a part of the heart where it stays and it lives with us. Mm -hmm. and, and one thing that, that we do know or are absolute, have absolute faith within is that whatever we have lived through, whatever trauma we may have gone through physically, as we move into that moment of the spirit, there is a letting go. There is a letting go of pain. There is a letting go sometimes even of the memory until we are then able to heal. And then it seems as if it was but a distant dream. And, and so, you know, and, and this gradual awakening to this new reality um, is wonderful. I remember reading, um, and it was one of the conflicts, and we know that there have been many conflicts throughout the world and, and many people who pass in, in, in very traumatic circumstances. And I remember reading, it was a very old book, and it was telling the story of how all these people died within conflict and then all of a sudden they woke up to another reality, but they were actually laying on a lawn in the sunshine and they just woke up. And none of, none of what they had existed through was there anymore. And that they were able to realize, well, actually they passed. Mm. And, and um, I've always remembered that. And I've always held on within myself, you know, that, the strongest of us, you know, and however strong we are, sometimes we go through situations that break our hearts, but never at that moment, it's always afterwards. And that is something that, you know, compassion and focusing upon the higher purpose of that which we do and that which we create, give me thy strength. We find it within us when we need to, and we are able to, you know, unfold that which is needed. And then yes, our heart is broken over and over, but it's broken afterwards. 
you know, and we are able to do what we need to do. And, and, and that's, you know, that's one of the greatest gifts is the love and the compassion and the understanding of another person's need. And even if they're ranting and cursing, you know, um, they're still, you know, and sometimes some of the stubbornest have the hearts of gold. So we're all different and we're all individual. Um, but that's the joy of life, you know. It's a wonderful subject. I mean, really, it's endless. I know. It's so beautiful. And I really appreciate you sharing all of these wonderful insights into palliative care and the spirit experience. You know, we, we all at some point in our life either help someone go through this process or know people who are helping people go through this process or we go through it ourselves eventually, all of us. But yes. that end of life care and how do we assist in the healing and, and be aware of the spirit presence and, and support that process of transition. And you so beautifully stepped uh, people today through that. So thank you, Colin. Thank you so much. Do you know, it's always such a joy to, to see you and to see your lovely smiley face. I thought of you this morning and all of a sudden there was a great beam and I thought, oh, lovely, I'm going to see Willa today. And we've only met a couple of times and yet you're part of my heart and family. So that's wonderful. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Colin. I, I definitely feel honoured and, and feel the same way about you. <laughs> well, thank you so much. And it's been a joy once again to just speak of life really because it is about life and the journey of life and these are happy tears for people who are my mm. I, I i'm just one of those feelers <laughs> well it is you see because it's the compassion you see that that opens the heart and and brings forth that wonderful healing and um Beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Colin. And I encourage everyone to take a look at Colin's website so you can take a look at his offerings. He's been a teacher for many years at the Arthur Finley College. Yes. I know he does online classes as well. And he's a wonderful spiritual medium. And for those of you who are joining the show late, Colin, if you haven't noticed, has an accent. He's from the United Kingdom. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Yes, in a little village called Godmanchester, which is rather wonderful. So you can catch up with me at mediumcolinbates.com. There you go. There you are. You'll be able to find Colin that way. And tune in next week when my guest is Laura Wooster, and she is an intuitive medium. We're going to be talking about trusting spirit. So I've got a lot of great shows lined up for you for them month of June and certainly take a look at the lilydaleassembly.org website. We do have our summer workshop program. Um, hopefully things or events are being added uh, as we speak so that you can enjoy that which are the summer offerings from Lilydale. All right everyone I'll see you next week. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye everyone. Bye Willa. See you soon my darling. Bye.